I don't know if you uh, saw my question, but I had a question about uh, yes. whether or not we're doing something, uh, whether or not we're actually doing good in um, in trying to convince theist people that God is not actually real, or that we don't believe that God is real. Do you, do you have any thoughts on that? If we're doing harm to people by helping them get out from their religious yeah, beliefs? Because, yeah, because my thought is that, you know, when I talk to theists and, you know, they talk about Jesus sacrificing himself and, and all this, all this stuff, they kind of seem like it's, they, they have a good feeling about it. They like to think that there's a God that loves them and everything. Yeah. So do people in, in spousal abuse situations, he hits me because he loves me sort of thing. It's helping them out of there is doing good. Even if it, if, even if it causes them emotional harm and stress to begin with. The truth is always a defense. And I think, think probably my favorite answer for this comes from uh, Dennis Louvet back when he and I were doing uh, the nonprofits together. And somebody wrote in and said, when you get rid of religion, what do you replace it with? And Dennis says, when you cure cancer, what do you replace it with? Yeah, it makes, it makes sense. Well, beyond religion, is it, would it be fair to say we were asking a larger question? And the question is not, should we disabuse people of their faith? But the question might be, do facts matter? Like, do you and I want to live in a world where facts matter or don't matter? Do you think that question's fair? Do you, or do you think belief and the sort of warm, gooey feelings that come with uh, uh, different kinds of faith belief trump the facts? Do facts matter? Well, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm not sure I quite catch you. I, I think I might- Would you rather live a harder yeah. truth than a happy fantasy? Well, I mean, personally, I would I would probably rather have truth, but I mean, there are certain situations where you could argue about that. I know Matt yep. probably you probably talked about. I buy that. Uh, I understand. Uh, I understand what religion does as a mechanism. I don't mean to talk over you, but I know we're on the clock. But is the question: Do facts matter? Do you feel like that's a valid and worthy question to promote on shows like this and on platforms all around the world? Well, uh, I mean, personally, yes, but but I think there are, like I said before, there are situations. Yeah. I mean, for example, I'm a very big advocate of, you know, um, I guess you could call it like a sort of personal faith. Like you believe in yourself. You believe that you have abilities, that you can do good things. Do you do you have any thoughts on that? Sure, sure. Personal confidence, as long as it's, you know, you don't think that you can, you know, leap across buildings unless you actually can. Uh, there, there are difficult things. There are people... If, if you did a poll and said, if you had a terminal illness that was gonna kill you in six months, would you wanna know? And there are people who would say yes, and there are people who would say no. And I think they both have good reasons for that. What, what I'm doing is not running around telling everybody, you, you've got a terminal illness, you've got a terminal illness. I don't go to door to door knocking with the old, you know, have you stopped believing in Jesus? I don't make outgoing calls. What we're doing is engaging with the people who wanna know. We're engaging with people who are saying, I, I think I have a terminal illness called Jesus and I'd like a second opinion, uh, that sort of thing. And along those lines, if I'm just addressing their reasons and explaining why I don't agree or why I think nobody should, um, I'm not taking anything away from anybody. What I'm doing is having an honest discussion whereby some people will give up uh, so their beliefs, and other people will double down. It may be the case that, you know, Barbara, after talking to us, uh, believes in Jesus even more strongly than she ever did before. Um, I'm not, if I were running around just going, you're an idiot for believing, and that's stupid, and this is that, and you should stop believing, and all that, that would be, not only would I be a, a dick like God, uh, but it would be the sort of thing where I'm actively trying to take things away from people. Well, does that speak to, though, the narrative out there that, you know, some people, uh, this, uh, I think this is, falls under the bias of lowered expectations, but some people out there are so weak or they're so disadvantaged or so much in pain that they simply need their God belief. Why rip it away from them? It, it, it is similar to that, but I don't want to put in the same category because that's one of the most arrogant, condescending, disgusting things I've ever heard, and I hear it all the time. Oh, I don't need religion, but all these little people do. I'm able to control my impulses and live a good life, but all these other people, they wouldn't be able to do that if you took their God away. Well, they would if you replaced it with the same level of understanding you have, and there's no reason that none of this is so complicated uh, that the bulk of human beings 
uh, are immune from being able to understand that their actions have consequences, that they have a living world where they share space with other people, and that maybe you're not the special some bitch that God thinks you are. <laughs> but yeah. on that note, I appreciate the call, Sebastian. Thanks for waiting till uh, well past the end uh, to get it on here. I'm going to let you go. And hi. <laughs> That speaks to the humanism in us, doesn't it? Yeah. If we make the world a better place, we negate more and more this idea that one must tell, you must tell yourself a lie to be able to cope with death or overcome adversity or do all these other things. If we're genuinely humanists helping other people, then, you know, there's no narrative out there at all that says you must believe in magic or deities or spirits or gods or heaven or hell or any of those types of things because the solutions are right here. They're real world solutions, human to human solutions. So, And I'm convinced the only reason there's difficulty with dealing with death is because religions have poisoned everybody's mind about what life and death are and an afterlife. It, it so poisons the conversation that it sets up these false expectations that make things in an attempt to make it easier to deal with, they make it more difficult to deal with. And we have to do a better job. And I'm glad you mentioned the humanism uh, because that's the cornerstone of atheism isn't a worldview. It's the rejection of a claim that a God exists. Nope, I don't believe that, I'm not convinced. Or maybe I'm convinced it's not true. For me, it's rooted in skepticism. But what guides my life, what, what determines how I'm gonna interact with people, that's all about humanism. That's all about, as far as I can tell, I'm stuck on this planet with other people and there's no divine hand coming down to rescue me from drowning. I can't prove that it's not true, but I have to live my life as if it's not true until I have reason to believe that it is. And as far as I can tell, this is the one and only life that I'm gonna get. And so I'm gonna spend it doing as many of these shows as I can, spending as much time with my good friends as I can, answering questions as honestly as I can. And if ultimately somebody discovers that they've been believing something without good reason and they give it up and it's not a conscious decision and this causes them pain, my telling them why I don't believe and why I think they shouldn't, I'm not the one causing the pain. The lie that was instilled in them at the beginning is the cause of that pain. It's the, it's the pain that you feel for losing something that you never had and never thought should have thought that you did have. And for that, simply having the conversation cannot be viewed as, oh, you're doing harm for me. You're taking away their faith. You're ripping away their hope of seeing their loved ones. I didn't put that hope there. Just like whoever told them they were gonna inherit a billion dollars when they hit 30, and they get to 30 and they find out it's a lie. The person who says you don't have $30 billion in the account isn't the person that's doing the harm. The harm was done when that misinformation was implanted in their brain to begin with. That's what this show's about. That's what Seth is doing with the Thinking Atheist. That's what organizations are doing. That's what the conventions are about. And I am absolutely saddened that we have to and yet thrilled that we can engage on these topics. 